All right, so look, Slitherwing is a paradox that I have not really messed around with yet. So I decided today, I'm gonna make it my goal to ruin some people's day with crazy ass deformed Volcarona. So it's looking like my opponent has some pretty solid taste. That's because we've got some, yeah, a couple similar Pokemon here. You too can have some exquisite taste if you hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300K this year and it would really mean a lot. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is gonna end up leading off with a Slitherwing of their own. I don't care who the hell you are, this thing is adorable. Look at him standing up on his two legs. I just wanna give him a hug. Regardless, my boy Fred over here would rather beat the ever-loving shit out of this thing, and that's, you know, kinda solid. I have a decent matchup here. I'm thinking I can get my Stealth Rock up for free. This is actually a Lycanroc set where I'm Focus Sash with Endeavor and Accelerox. So if, th if this thing wanted to hack around and find out, it could close combat. Um, but yeah, it ends up instead going for the U-turn here. It actually turned out to be faster and goes into the bonk. So I'm able to get up my Stealth Rock, which is pretty helpful. But we did see that the Slitherwing being faster means that it's Choice Scarf. So right from turn one, I gain a little bit of intel and then I kind of know how to work around that thing a little bit better. Um, but Dog finds himself in not the best situation here because I'd prefer not to get beaten to death by a hammer, although I don't really have an easy switch because predicting the slow row, he can just go right for the knockoff. It's the safest play. So instead, I decide, fuck it, my sash is already broken anyway. I just go right for the Endeavor there and knock it down to the same amount of health that I'm at as it does. Tell me to knock it off and just ends up taking out the uh, Lycanroc there. So it's a trade I'm willing to make, mostly because now Tikatun is in kind of a manageable amount of HP. Getting that chip damage there uh, should set it up to where I can be able to take it out with something else. So. I get myself a free switch right into this thing. I'm coming out here slithering menacely around and I figure with the choice band, I can either go for a U-turn predicting a switch. I decide instead to just go right for the closed combat. Uh, they're gonna end up switching out the Tinkaton and instead bring out the Salamence, which is not ideal because this thing is gonna come in and it does show me it's Intimidates and you know, minus one attack is not gonna be too much. Also important to note, Salamence did not take Stealth Rock damage uh, so even though you can't see him on his little feet over there, he is wearing some heavy duty boots. So it eats that close combat relatively well, but now I gotta get my ass out of here. And I figure Slowbro is a pretty decent switch here. If it decides to uh, start dragon dancing or something like that, I can definitely scare it out. So Paul comes in looking about confused as shit as always. Turns out it's actually gonna be a special attacking Salamence as it goes for the air slash. However, it somehow misses the large pink target and will take it. So here's what I'm thinking at this point. Uh, it may be a dumb idea, but it could work out. I'm gonna go for a nasty plot, thinking maybe this thing switches out fearing the ice beam. Instead, it just stays in, goes for that air slash, and I do grab myself a nasty plot. Now, of course, I'm actually not carrying an ice beam. I have uh, basically just surf and flamethrower on the coverage for this, and now Slebro finds himself in a bit of a pickle. But the reason why I figured it was worth the risk there in case he did switch, I find myself in a good spot at the plus two. Um, but I can just easily switch out, get that nice little uh, regenerator because Paul regenerates his tail, and I can switch into uh, the bonking, ready to ready to do some bonking myself. Uh, this thing, you notice, I take that air slash insanely well. I, that's because this thing is about specially defensive as hell. This thing is max special defense, so I'm not even afraid of the flamethrower. It does do you know a decent bit, but it allows me to set up a free screen. And I decide to go for the reflect, expecting potentially a switch, but now I'm just positioned really well against the physical attackers on the team. And now I figure, screw it, I'm gonna go for a light screen as well. I'm able to live another flamethrower because this is the thickest Tinkaton of all time. Ain't even using my hammer, it was not necessary today. It's instead there just to be able to soak up some damage. So I'm able to get up both light screen and reflect, plus with my light clay item, that's gonna stick around for a while. And now I'm, I've got myself in a position where I feel like I should be able to get some mons going. He goes for another air slash here, ends up missing, which to my surprise, I, I do get to use my hammer. So I get a ton, it does not quite take out this elements, but if this thing wasn't in a position where it was gonna die before, now it's definitely not gonna be taking any attack. So one more flamethrower does take care of me, but now I get a free switch behind both screens and I am feeling safe out here. I decide it's time to get ESPN some action here. Now this is a choice specs, uh, Espeon here, who Psychic is looking really good against their team, plus with the screens, I know that I can take an attack from pretty much anything. So, I am able to outspeed here because this kitty run quick, and I go right for the nice little Psychic to take care of the fat ass Salamence. How is this thing just floating in the air, not even flapping? About the fattest dragon I've ever seen. But, uh, on the free switch, now they decide to go into Donphan. There's only one reason you go into Donphan here, and that's mainly just to get up uh, a, a little rapid spin, so I decide I'm just gonna go right for a psychic. He can knock off, but that's mostly fine. I'm expecting the rapid spin turn one. Uh, it does go for the rapid spin here, and now I found myself in a spot where Espeon can actually still continue to do some pretty solid damage, but I would like to continue 
you know, wearing my sweet choice bags, and I would prefer not to take any damage knowing that I can still uh, potentially eat anything other than like a first impression from the Slitherwing. So I decided to go for the Terra Psychic here. That's mainly just because I don't really have another Terra in the back pocket that could help me out that much. I don't know. I just figure I'm going to go for the extreme damage on the Espeon here to ensure uh, that this is able to take care of both Donphan and anything that switches into this is going to have a bad time. I, in hindsight, I actually, Psychic wasn't even a role here. I think the, without the Terra, it's definitely going to take out the Dawn fan, but that is most definitely going to be a deadass fan, and this thing basically came in to spin around a little bit in a rapid fashion, and now it's gone. So, back comes the Slitherwing. Now, this thing, I'm worried about both, of course, this thing being Choice Scarf. Immediately in your head, you go to first impression. Um, but either way, I figure I'm going to save the Espeon for later because it looks pretty nice. And I can go into a Slitherwing of my own. I figure you want to compare you want to compare Slithers. Mine's looking a little bit girthier. Uh, <laughs> he goes for the U-turn here. And, you know, I'm behind a Reflect and a Light Screen. So I know that pretty much no matter what comes in here, I'm going to have myself a solid time. It's going to be Thanksgiving feast up in this bitch. Uh, so it decides to go into the... Uh, the Sandy Shocks. Now, I'm thinking Choice Banded Close Combat actually should knock this thing out from full HP. Goes for the Thunderbolt. That just scratches me. It hardly even hurts. I'm about thick as store-bought gravy. And I'm able to then go for the Close Combat, which does take care of the Sandy Shock. Sandy Shock is actually an extremely scary Pokemon. And I'm kind of worried about that thing for this match, so it's good to see uh, that boy gone. So, unfortunately, both screens are now gone, so we're just out here raw dog in life. But it's fine. Yeah, they get the free switch into the Lycanroc. Now, their Lycanroc is faster than me because I'm not Choice Scarf, I'm actually Choice Band. But I do have the Paul in the back pocket. He's actually still chilling at like full HP because I did get that Regenerator. He had a little bit of, little bit of shenanigans earlier, but he's feeling, he's feeling better about coming in today. So, uh, they actually predict the switch into the Slowbro and go for the Thunderfang. So it does have the coverage there. You would expect Crunch, but if they, hey, if you have the power to summon lightning through your mouth, I guess just go for it. So. Uh, I'm just gonna go for a surf. I do expect this thing to be focus sash. Does actually end up showing me he does have the crunch as well. So I'm talking about double coverage on my boy Paul over here, who does get to shred a gnarly wave right into this thing's face, and I do knock it down to its focus sash. It's probably why uh, they wanted to rapid spin away the stealth rock earlier. Um, but I'm honestly fine with that. Being able to knock this thing to one, I'm able to kind of allocate the resource that is slow bro to knocking this thing to that point, uh, to where I can easily just outspeed and guarantee that it goes down later. So. I was considering letting this thing go down, but Paul is my absolute fucking homie, so I decided to save him for later, and I figured I could just give this thing a nice little buzz cut. Rotomo comes in, ready to do some snip snipping, and uh, actually, I, I know that I can live any attack that this thing throws at me, and then be able to outspeed it, because I am actually, I am a lawnmower wearing a scarf. This is Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. I am actually faster, I know that I can be able to knock this thing out with a Volt Switch, and I can be able to neutralize the threat that is the, the Lycanroc there. Also, switching out Slowbro did give me some more Regenerators. So I'd just be out here regenerating my little ass off, and you'll love to see it. So we have an empty battlefield here. I have to switch into something first, because of course, I did kill it with the Volt Switch, but I decide to bring back into Slither. This thing is an absolute beast, and not done quite yet. So. They decide to go back into MC Hammer, but thankfully my endeavor earlier on put this thing into range where I know that I can easily knock this thing out, but now it's just managing the last two Pokemon. The last thing after this is going to be that Slitherwing of their own, but I decided to just go for the close combat just to ensure uh, that I can knock this thing out. And Slitherwing is just out here collecting kills. My boy is about to grab himself a UAV if I can get myself one more on that kill streak. Uh, so down goes the Tink, and now the free switch into the Slitherwing is going to be the last mod. So I've got one more thing to deal with. And I just got to figure out how to do so. Now, I know that his is going to be faster than mine. Um, and I don't really want mine to go down because Snape is the absolute OG. So I decide I'm going to actually go into Slowbro to sack this thing off. Because here's the plan of attack. Essentially, I imagine Slowbro comes in. I sack it off. It does die. And then I can get a free switch into my Choice Scarf, Rotom, who can then get a little bit of chip to put this thing into range where my Slitherwing can take care of it. So that is the plan. Uh, it does lock itself into Wild Charge, which is interesting there. So Slowbro actually eats that relatively nicely. Unfortunately, I didn't quite regenerate enough because I can't take one more. But that should be fine because this thing is taking some recoil. So any damage that I can get on this uh, it does help me out. So one more Wild Charge takes out the Slowbro. Uh, but this thing did its job in just being bulky and annoying. And that's my, my fucking boy right there. Shout out to Paul. Um, so now I have to go into the Rotom. Now this thing is a bit faster than Choice Scarf Slitherwing. I think it's actually only faster by like five points. So luckily we are here wearing scarfs, little scarf on scarf action. The good news also is that this thing locked itself into wild charge. So 
you know, I can easily take that. But I go for the Thunderbolt here. I'm able to get a nice little chunk to the point where I'm, I'm confident that my Slither can win the one-on-one. -on -one. And we also see that, yeah, the Wild Charge pretty much does nothing to me here. Um, but I decide the plan is still on. We, we are going with plan A, and that is to let Snape figure this shit out himself. Um, and I know that I can probably come into a Wild Charge. I can take that. Um, and then be able to hit it with the first impression and, and, and kill it. So this has been a very slithery match today, but I I had to grab my dude the, the, the triple kill. So he actually ends up going for the Terra here, which I'll tell you, I did not expect that. And I'm thinking, wait, is this going to ruin some shit? It actually turned out to be Terra ground. And that would have actually been bad had I stayed in with my lawnmower because, you know, it just soaks up the, uh, the Thunderbolt at that point. But... Uh, I bring in the Slither, I'm able to take a Wild Charge just hardly, and then uh, with that recoil, it's pretty much guaranteed, especially now that he's ground type, the Choice Band First Impression is going to finish it off. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the match, and Slitherwing is my new homie. I, I, found, I found one of my new favorite Paradox friends. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, as always. Make sure to leave a comment on the video and leave a like. I always appreciate the support on these, and I'll definitely be pumping some more out if you guys are, uh, if you guys are into that type of thing.